<laughs> Welcome to another episode of Craft Chocolate TV. I am Dylan Butterby, your host for this episode on conching. And this is a really important step. We're often used to in craft chocolate in the really small batches using the stone melangers, uh, wet stone grinders like Coco Towns or Santa's for grinding, uh, which is melanging and conching. And this is where you're burning off acids. You're burning off the uh, mainly acetic acid and it's volatilizing out of the chocolate because vinegar, which is acetic acid, doesn't taste very good in chocolate. Although beans we find with high acetic acid have nice fruity tones, you still want to get rid of that. And a lot of that happens when you roast, a lot of that happens when you initially grind. So in our ball mill over here, we're burning off a lot of it when we're pulverizing everything. And so there's vents on this that's blowing it all out. And then after a few hours in the grinder, we've achieved our micron size. It's ready to transfer over into our conch. And so there's many features of this conch that I really like. This is a pack into conch. It's mainly a holding tank with a shear stress device in it, which is this big motor up here. And it goes down a shaft. And then there's the, this propeller type of uh, contraption surrounded by a ring. And there's teeth spaced around this ring about five millimeters, six millimeters apart. And it's sucking all the chocolate through and throwing it out this, through these teeth. And so there's all these amalgamated particles when you make chocolate throughout this, this grinding phase where you want to break them apart and you want to enrobe them in cocoa butter because on your palate, uh, when you eat the chocolate, it melts so much nicer, it tastes so much better just texturally. And so this device does that really well. In fact, after a couple hours of going through this uh, shear stress device, you can see the way the chocolate behaves. Without adding any butter, it looks like we added a whole bunch of cocoa butter. So it just made the texture a lot better and then the other features, there's a pump down here and it's recirculating the chocolate. So it sucks it from the bottom through here, up, over and down. And then it's exposed to oxygen. And so when you expose it to oxygen, you're also allowing a lot more volatilization again. There's also a heat uh, device right here that's blowing hot air on the recirculating oxygenated chocolate, helping to burn off excess gases once again. There's a vent. It's sucking air through here and helping all that acid right out of the other vent, the fan right there. And so we can control all of this with the PLC system. So we can program and say we want, for the first six hours, we want to run the shear stress device. We want the pump going, recirculating it. We want the heater on and we want the fan going. Then for the next 12 hours, maybe we don't want the shear stress device going, but we want everything else. And then the next 24 hours, we want just the fan, the vent, and the heat. And there's also a stir that's keeping everything moving as well. And so we really have a lot of control depending on the beans that we're using and the chocolate that we want to see as a finished product. Now we've separated the grinding, which is the ball mill, or the melanging, and the conching. So that's what conching is. Um, you can do it in a stone melanger. It works, you just don't have control. And what we've really been going for is just control over every step in this process. This is conching. I hope this helps you guys. Ask us questions. Good luck, happy chocolate making.